Welcome back, my name is Last Snow Meal, and today we're going to talk about Netflix The Witcher. Over the past couple of days, there has been a lot of developments about the news of the season 1, uh, there has been some talk around the Nilfgaardian armor, the showrunner finally said something about it, because we have been waiting for so many months for someone from the production team to tell us why the hell is the Nilfgaardian armor looking the way it is. Because if you remember a couple of months ago, before the teaser even came out, there were a couple of leaked images that surfaced online with that at that time allegedly the Nilfgaardian armor. A lot of people thought it's gonna be like a VFX replacement, that it's just a test, it's not going to be in the first season, but the armor made it to the first season and um, we finally have Lauren uh, Schmidt, who is the showrunner, explain why the armor is looking the way it is and this is what she said. The thought process was like this. Unlike the Sintrian army, which consists of highly trained knights and specialized soldiers under Kalanthi's royal lead, the Nilfgaardian army is one of conscription. As they march northward, the army pillages towns and forces villagers into military servitude. They are not an elite fighting force yet, there are powerful leaders in the forefront, yes, but the army itself is more of a ragtag born of necessity without glamour or means. Their armor reflects that. In a way, I do understand where they're coming from about you know, the Nilfgaardian Empire not being as strong yet as they were, for example, in The Witcher 3, because The Witcher 3 is set all these years after the books, and at that time, the Nilfgaardian Empire was really goddamn strong. At that time, when the short stories happen, the Nilfgaardian Empire is strong, but not in a sense you imagine it. But at the same time, it does not explain why the armor is looking the way it is. Because in some ways, it doesn't look like something someone would wear at that time. And I know, yes, this is an imaginary world, people should have um, freedom to express themselves in their own way, but even decisions can be wrong. If someone from the production team or the costume team um, decided, yeah, this is the armor, it doesn't mean that it's a good decision. Now, hopefully, hopefully the armor does change um, in the later seasons as New Guardians actually get stronger. And um, this is uh, what she also added about the armor. I quite understand the inspiration parallels with Rome and Nazi Germany, but the important word from my post above is yet. We're hoping for a show that goes for years and years, which means we specifically chose not to depict Nilfgaardian at their end point, as the most powerful force on the continent, as with the old storytelling we try to start at the beginning or close to it, and then give everything room to change and breathe and grow into its fantastic final form. So this is basically what it is. The first season is not going to depict Nilfgaardians as they are going to show them in the later seasons. Keep in mind, the show is uh, so far announced for seven seasons. Uh, the season one is going to serve as an introductory um, kind of a season where you get to meet all the characters, see their backstories before it actually continues on to the saga and it you know shows the, the big story of the Witcher that we know. But uh, hopefully, hopefully their later armor is um, a lot better looking one, because the one that they are showing right now is really not that good. Uh, a lot of people says it looks like Scrotum, I'm not going to deny that. It could be better, and in the later seasons, hopefully it will be better. Um, again, I know they're saying like, yeah, this is the first version of them. It can still be good. Like, if you want people to cosplay in your stuff, if you want to become the next big thing, you have to take those things into account. Because if you look at the armor from the video game, even though it's when the Nilfgaardian army and the Empire was at the height of their power, still, it needs more imagination in my opinion, so that's the explanation we got. So in the later seasons, the armor is going to change, which is definitely a big plus. Keep in mind, they're still getting to, you know, get everything right in the first season, which can sometimes... It can be difficult and you can fail, but in the later seasons, you can really push it to a whole different spectrum, because obviously, if the show is watched, it's going to bring a lot of money, which means um, the budget for the show is going to grow um, as the seasons go on, and if the popularity of the show goes up as well. 
Moving to next uh, Flash news, we know that the official name of Geralt's sidekick is going to be Yaskir as it was in the books. Keep in mind, the video games, Yaskir was translated to Dandelion, but in the show, they're going to stick with the original name Yaskir as it was in the books. Also, the VFX supervisor Julian Perry confirms there will be a Jin in The Witcher. I'm not going to spoil anything, but there is a certain you know, part of the short story when a certain djinn appears, so I'm I'm really uh, happy that they are going to include him, and um, hopefully we see more of the VFX, like what we've seen from the trailer is definitely really good, um, keep in mind, the, the series don't have the budget as films, so CGI usually suffers a lot, you don't have the budget of Transformers, and keep in mind, Game of Thrones in their last season had a huge budget for their VFX, um, so you can't really compare these two things yet, um, in a sense of budget, because this is season 1, and I believe the season 1 of The Witcher has um, a bigger budget than the season 1 of Game of Thrones, which doesn't mean anything if you can utilize um, less money and give proper results, it's always gonna be more welcoming than having millions and hundreds of millions of dollars that you waste, so hopefully on that front um, the show is going to be good. We also know from the VFX supervisor Julian Perry that the show is leaning more towards to be a, a horror rather than to be a fantasy show, which is great. Um, there are so many monsters in the world of The Witcher you can talk about and show them in a very grotesque way. And that is something I wanted to see. I don't want monsters which are kind of a sugar-coated, good-looking monsters. I want the monster to look scary. I want it to show fear, to show terror and um, that is something they want to show. For example, he did mention that this trigger in the show is gonna be awful looking. I mean, awful looking in a sense, you're not going to like what you see because it's going to be very, very grotesque. And honestly, for a show like this, it's always welcoming. The world of The Witcher is dark by itself. And if you show it in some of a fantasy kind of a way, I don't think it's going to connect with people, but if you show it as they want to show it, like a uh, down-to-earth horror story, in a way, I think it definitely has a future, and um, I want to see how they actually portray it um, in the end. So, for all the Witcher fans out there, this is definitely a good news. They're not trying to be this or that, they're not trying to be Game of Thrones. Um, of course, they want to be the next Game of Thrones in terms of popularity, but you can only achieve that if you have your own um, way of doing things and if you are actually a trendsetter, not just a trend follower. So, as I've been reading this news, all of it sounds more and more logical, and I know people have been hard on this show, it's okay if you don't like it, it's perfectly okay, but um, there is definitely room to improve, and only if they improve, they will actually get the people that um, don't want to look at the series, they will get them to watch it. So hopefully that happens, hopefully the show succeeds. I really do want it uh, to see succeed. I know there has been a lot of political um, things around the show, around the writers, about the, the showrunner. I will talk about that in the later video, I don't want to keep this video too long, but... Um, that's it so far, that's all the news we have, if something more comes up, I will definitely talk about it, so don't forget to subscribe, and tell me down below what you think about this, I will leave all the sources, the links um, down below, so check it out, and that's it, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Discord if you want to join our amazing community, and this is LKM signing out, stay classy everyone, and I'll talk to you in the next video, bye bye.